Okay, so good day class. Um, again, um, we will just continue our discussion. This is actually the continuations of our topic uh, on lesson two. Um, but before that, allow me to share my presentation. Okay, just like what I said a while ago, so our topic for today is about cleaning and sanitizing. So objectives at the end of the lesson, um, you will learn or you will identify, um, of course, uh, types of tools and equipments and paraphernalias, which is actually, we discussed this um, last meeting. And then you will classify types of appropriate cleaning tools and equipment based on their uses. And you will be able to select various types of chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Okay, so let's just now identify what is the differences between clean and sanitize. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Meron ba silang pagkakaiba? Okay? So let's just define first what is clean. So when you say clean, it means that the soil and food are visibly removed from the surface. So meaning, cleaning removes dirt and other impurities from the surfaces. What about sanitize? Sanitize, it means that those surfaces have a reduction of pathogens, meaning uh, it's simple as, it simple as that when you say sanitize or sanitizing, so it lowers the numbers of germs on the surface or objects either by killing them or removing them to a safe level. Okay, so with that, the main difference between um, cleaning and sanitizing is that cleaning is the act of uh, cleaning debris and deposits on a surface. So it's either no visible dirt. So you have to wash surface with soap and water. On the other hand, or while the sanitizing, so it involves killing bacteria after the surface has already been cleaned or wiped off. So it's either um, you will use water with at least 180 degree Fahrenheit or use a sanitizer liquid. So later on, we will discuss those sanitizing methods. Let's proceed to cleaning. Again, when you say cleaning, it is the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface such as a dish, glass, or cutting boards. It is done with cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. Um, in cleaning, guys, so we have uh, some cleaning agents. So we divided 
um, the cleaning agents into four categories. First, we have detergent. Second, we have the solvent cleaners. Third, we have the acid cleaners. And number and fourth is the abra abrasive cleaners. Um, different cleaning agents are used depending on the um, item to be used or to be cleaned. Um, it also depends on the cleaning method and the types of soil or soiling found on the items, kung gaano kadumi yung mismong items. So again, nagdidepende ang paggamit natin ng mga cleaning agents according sa kung ano ba yung lilinisin, anong method ang, ang uh, cleaning method ang gagamitin natin, at gaano ba kadumi yung mismong item na tatanggalan natin ng dumi. Okay. So from those uh this these four categories of cleaning agent so actually these are uh used in commercial kitchen okay so we will discuss furthermore each of these cleaning agent in order for uh for you to know um what is their roles or functions as cleaning agents and at the same time we will also know how to use it okay so let's proceed to the num uh, first cleaning agent which is detergent so the detergent are are the most common types of cleaning uh cleaning agents and are used in home and at the same time in commercial kitchens. So detergents works by, of course, breaking up dirt or soil, um, making it easy to wash it away. So detergents used in commercial kitchens are usually synthetics or synthetic detergent. Um, which is made from preto uh, petroleum products and maybe in the form of powder, liquid gel, liquid gel, or crystals. Okay. Second, we have the solvent cleaners. Um, solvent cleaners are sometimes also known as the greaser. Okay, again, solvent cleaners is also known as degreaser. D-E-G-R-E-A-S-E-R. -E -E okay, and are used to remove, of course, grease. So again, uh, solvent cleaners is also uh, are used to remove grease from surfaces such as, for example, oven tops, counters, Grills, so um, the most of uh, most of the food businesses, such as restaurant foods or other food establishment, now um, they they try to use non toxic, non fuming degreasers in their operations to prevent chemical, uh, uh, chemical contaminations. So again po, when you say solvent cleaners are also known as degreasers, they are used extensively for, of course, dry cleaning and for stain removal. So um, the uh, solvent cleaners have strong fumes. And again, remember, uh, if we're using solvent cleaners, just make sure na well ventilated yung room na or yung room or area na lilinis, paglilinisan nyo. Okay? Kasi nga masyado ng matapang yung amoy ng solvent cleaners. So, the solvent cleaners are again often used to remove scale in uh, same as washing machine and steam tables. Number three, we have the abrasive cleaners. 
So as you can see from, uh, from our uh, presentation, so that is an example of abrasive cleaners. So abrasives are substances or chemicals that depend on rubbing or scrubbing actions to clean dirt from hard surfaces. So in commercial uh, kitchen, abrasives are usually used to clean floors, um, ginagamit din siya sa paglinis ng mga pots, especially kung yung mga, uh, what do you call this, yung mga um, kawale or yung mga uh, kaserola na medyo maitim na yung pinaka bottom ng, or yung pinaka sabi natin pwetan ng mga kawale or uh, mga uh, pots. So ginagamit po natin yan. Yung mga pots, uh, ginagamit ang abrasive cleaners for cleaning pots and pans. Okay, so, but then again, um, if you're using abrasive, you should be use, use these uh, chemicals with care as they may, uh, of course, scratch certain types of materials um, na ginagamit natin sa kitchen tulad ng mga tools and equipments, okay? Um, that's why hindi pwede siyang gamitin sa mga... Um, sa mga pants na kung saan ay um, non-stick uh, non pan. Okay? Kasi masisira yung non-stick ninyo. Okay? Um, some abrasive cleaners can also be used as disinfectant. Okay? So, again, remember, if, if it is not properly cleaned, so... Yung, uh, yung food na ilalagay natin doon, doon sa mismo ginamitan natin, let's say for example, we're, we're uh, using yung mga pans na ginamitan natin na panlinis ay abrasive cleaner. So once na hindi siya na-rinse mabuti, so it could be contaminated. Okay? So again, this is a chemical, so dapat medyo maingat tayo sa paggamit ng mga chemicals. Okay? Then, we also have what we call acid cleaners. So, acid cleaners are the most powerful types of cleaning agents. And again, it should be used with care also. Um, if they are not diluted correctly, the acid cleaners can be very poisonous and corrosive. So... Sabi ko nga kanina is um, ito mga binabanggit natin. These are chemicals. So once na mali yung, um, what do you call this, yung ating pagdidilute ng mga cleaning agent, um, possible na pwedeng maging, uh, I mean, maging ano siya, mag-cause ng pagkalason kung ma-ingest natin siya. And at the same time, pwedeng makasira doon sa mga Um, gamit natin na um, gamit natin sa kitchen na pinagamitan natin para I mean kung gumamit tayo ng, ng uh, acid cleaners okay for those tools and equipment so um, acid cleaners are generally used to remove minerals deposits and um, it is useful for descaling dishwashers or removing rust from let's say restroom facilities Okay, so yun yung pinaka, um, let's say for example, kung may mga kinakalawang-kalawang na yung mga ating, uh, you know, yung mga metals coming from, ba diba may mga stainless steel tayo minsan sa mga CR natin, minsan uh, nagkakaroon ng rusty, so you can use this cleaning agent, okay, the acid cleaners. But then again, uh, you still have to rinse it well para at least hindi siya, Um, hindi siya maging kumbaga makaharm sa ating kalusugan or maging poisonous and hindi masira yung mga um, tools na kinamitan natin ng acid cleaners. Okay? Okay, let's proceed to sanitizing method. So... Remember, um, always follow yung cleaning with sanitizing, di ba? So, 
Um, syempre, yung cleaning is the only first step to a germ-free kitchen. So, cleaning is done, of course, by using detergent. But again, it doesn't kill bacteria or other micro, uh, microorganisms uh, that can cause food poisoning. So, in order to kill the bacteria and to ensure a clean workplace, so you must follow cleaning with sanitizing. Okay, so we have two uh, methods in terms of sanitizing. First, we have the heat, and second is chemicals. So when you say heat, under the heat method or heat sanitizing method, so meron tayong mga tinatawag na steam, meron tayong tinatawag na hot waters, and hot air. Um, but yung commonly under the heat sanitizing method is yung hot water. So sabi dyan, it is the most common method used in restaurant. Actually, even in our house, minsan mapapansin nyo si mami o kaya uh, kung meron kayong kasambahay. So yung mga ginagamit natin mga utensils tulad ng mga plato, even spoon and fork. So after hugasan, yung iba ginagawa nila is Uh, binabanian nila ng mainit na tubig. So that is one way to sanitize our utensils okay, or tools. So um, take note if uh, sabi dyan, if hot water is used in the third compartment of a three compartment sink, dapat daw ang tubig na gagamitin natin is at least 171 degree Fahrenheit to or 77 degrees centigrade. So, um, sa mga susunod natin, uh, as you can see, uh, baka kasi medyo nalilito kayo kung ano yung third compartment. So, from the picture, I have here an example of a three-compartment sink, so which is usually ginagamit siya commercially sa mga restaurant, sa mga uh, food establishment na meron silang compartment. Kung mapapansin nyo, tatlo. So, yung isa dyan, Uh, which is um, actually madidiscuss naman natin to mamaya. We have, of course, yung uh, washing, re uh, rinsing, and sanitizing. Yun yung pinaka-commonly na uh, meron doon sa three compartment. Okay? Um, if a high temperature wear washing machine naman yung gagamitin daw natin, tulad nung nakikita nyo sa baba, um, ang ginagamit nila na yung sanitizing uh, in terms to... Uh, Uh, sa mga hinuhugasan natin ng mga tools and equipment like plates, glasses, uh, of course, utensils. So, dapat at least 180 degree Fahrenheit or 82 degree centigrade ang, ang temperature ng tubig. Okay? For stationary rack, so, single temperature machine, so sabi dyan, dapat daw ang init ng water is at this 165 degree Fahrenheit or 74 degree centigrade. Okay? Yung pangalawang sanitizing method natin, we have what we call chemicals. Okay? So, sabi dyan, chemicals that are approved are sanitizer, uh, approved sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium. So, again po, always remember, ito lang tatlong to, yung Uh, approved sanitizer for use with uh, food contact surfaces. Okay? Again, ano yung mga yon? So, we have the chlorine, we have the iodine, and quaternary ammonium or sometimes also known as quats. Okay? So, other than that, hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng iba pang mga sinasabi nilang sanitizing tulad ng alcohol. ba? Diba? So, sa kamay lang siya usually, ba? Diba? So, pero sa mga food contacts tulad ng mga ginagamit nating cubiertos or table appointments, syempre, ito ang pwedeng gamitin. So, with that, sa tatlong to, we will find out ano ba yung ano ba yung mga yan. Ano ba yung chlorine? Ano ba yung iodine? Ano ba yung quaternary ammonium? Paano ba sila gamitin? Okay? So, since these are chemicals, meron din siya silang... Um, Siyempre, uh, disadvantage din. So, that's why dapat alam natin kung paano gagamitin itong mga to Okay? So, but before that, let's proceed muna. Ano ba yung mga factors that will influence 
the effectiveness of chemical sanitizers. So, meron tayong tatlo. So, we have the concentration, temperature, and contact time. Okay? So, uh, in terms to concentration, sabi dyan, um the presence of too little sanitizer will result in inadequate reductions of harmful microorganism pag too much daw can be toxic. Um, pag sinabi natin concentrations, um, it is the amount of concentrated sanitizer. So, um, hindi pwede kasi natin gamitin na puro or fewer yung mga sanitizer sa mga Uh, sa pagsasanitize ng mga tools and equipment natin. Dapat dinidilute din natin to or uh, partly ng ano, uh, partly nung mismong sanitizing solution is meron ding to, uh, konting tubig or meron din tubig. So dapat uh, alam natin yon um, Sabi siya, Ann, may malaking epekto daw when it comes to effective, effectivity ng mismong sanitizer na para mapatay yung mga Uh, microorganisms or bacteria doon sa ating mga surfaces, sa kitchen surfaces or even sa mga tools and equipment natin um, kung gaano kadami or yeah, kung gaano yung amount na inilalagay natin ng mga concentrations doon sa ating uh, gagamitin for sanitizing. Um, kapag uh, always remember na kapag syempre konti lang, kumbaga hindi tama yung nilagay natin na amount ng um, um, sanitizing or chemical sanitizer ay hindi siya magiging effective para maging sanitizing or masanitize yung ating mga tools and equipment. But the problem here, kapag sumobra naman ang paglagay natin ng mga um, sanitizing chemical of course pwede siyang makapahamak sa ating kalusugan di ba so uh, that's why it's really important na alam dapat natin kung um, gaano lang dapat akadami ang kailangan nating gamitin para sa pagsasanitize so always remember so ang re recommended concentrations lang daw dapat ay is at least 25 to 100 ppm So when you say PPP, PPM, that is parts per million. Again, parts per million. Okay? So dapat at least 25 to 100 PPM ang recommended lang na concentrations for sanitizing or chemical sanitizer. Next, we have the temperature. So malaki din daw ang epekto ng temperature sa pagpatay ng mga bakterya sa mga... Uh, um, what they call kitchen surfaces or yung mga tools and equipment na ginagamit natin. So, dapat daw at least 130 degrees centigrade to or 149 degrees centigrade lang yung uh, uh, temperature ng tubig. Ibig sabihin doon, dapat uh, uh, nasa mainit siya. Diba? So in order para in order to kill yung mga bacteria, dapat mainit yung yung tubig na gagamitin natin. Hindi siya dapat malamig, di ba? Kasi may mga bacteria na hindi namamatay sa sa lamig or uh, katamtamang tubig. Next, um we have the contact time. So Um, pag sinabing contact time, ito yung oras na kung saan uh, binabad natin or kumbaga ito yung oras na nakababad yung mga tools and equipment natin doon sa mismong cleaning, um, I mean the, sanit the chemical sanitizer. So ang pinaka ano po, uh, when it comes to contact time, Uh, at least dapat daw 7 uh, seconds na nakababad, let's say kunyari, kutsara. Dapat nakababad yung kutsara doon sa chemical sanitizer within seven, at least 7 seconds para at least sure na napatay mo yung mga bakteriya doon. Okay? Okay, so let's just proceed to sanitizing testing. 
So just like what I've said a while ago, um, we have three types of chemical sanitizers. So, and this sanitize or those sanitizers are approved sanitizers for use with food contact surfaces, uh, which is includes, of course, we have the iodine, chlorine, and uh, quaternary ammonium. So, um, in every restaurant, uh, must have an appropriate testing kit to measure chemical sanitizer concentrations um, to accurately test the strength of a sanitizing solution one must first determine which chemicals or the chemical is being used whether it is the iodine um, chlorine and quaternary ammonium um, in terms of the test kits so test kits are not inter uh, interchangeably. So we have to check with our chemical supplier to be certain that we are using the correct, uh, correct kit. Okay. So remember the appropriate test kit must be used throughout the day to measure the chemical sanitizer concentrations. So as you can see, as you can see from our, uh, uh, from this table, so on the left side, th these are the chemicals. And then we have um, four columns, which are, uh, it includes the concentration, Again, the, uh, when you say concentrations is the amount of the chemical sanitizers that we're going to use in terms of sanitizing, the contact time, and also it includes the advantage and disadvantage of using this chemical sanitizer. So let's proceed for iodine. So when it comes to concentration, if we're using uh, iodine, it should be at least 12.5 to 25 ppm in water. And in terms to the temperature of water, it should be at least 75 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. When it comes to contact time, so if we're using uh, iodine as the sanitizer or our chemical sanitizer for our kitchen uh, surfaces. So at least daw 30 seconds na dapat nakababad yung mga surfaces para at least um, tuluyan talaga or sure na mapapatay niya yung mga bacteria na, na, na nandoon sa mismo mga surfaces of our kitchen. Um, the disadvantage... Or I mean the advantage of using iodine, sabi dyan, it forms brown color that indicates strength. So as you can see from the picture, kulay brown siya. Um, it is not affected daw kahit gumamit tayo ng mga hard water. When you say hard water, ito yung mga uh, tubig poso o yung mga, ang tawag dito, yung mga sinasabi nila na mga um, yung mga usual yung ginagamit natin na nasa faucet so that is hard water so hindi naman daw siya affected ng hindi wala daw ano any uh, any kumbaga parang hindi naman maaapektuhan yung uh, yung iodine kahit gumamit tayo ng mga tubig uh, tubig na nasa poso or tubig na, na usual yung ginagamit at nasa faucet and then just irritating to the skin. So unlike with Lorin, ang iodine, hindi siya ganun kahapde kapag ginamit natin siya at nahawakan natin siya. So yun naman yung advantage then. Another thing is uh, an activity not lost rapidly in the presence of organic matter. So hindi siya ganun, ganun, hindi ganun agad siya uh, madaling mawawala yung visa nung nung isang uh, nung iodine as a, uh, as a chemical sanitizing. 
So, kahit maglagay tayo ng, let's say, sabi saan, other organic matters, hindi siya maapektuhan. Okay? What about naman kapag chlorine ang ginamit natin for chemical sanitizing? Um, in terms of concentration, uh, dapat daw kapag nagdilyo tayo ng chlorine, at least 50, uh, 50 ppm or 50 parts per million na na um, uh, ratio with the with with the solutions of chlor- uh, chlorine and water and in terms to temperature dapat daw at least 75 degree Fahrenheit to 100 degree Fahrenheit ang temperature ng tubig um in terms to contact time at least 7 seconds yung kanyang uh, kumbaga Uh, medyo mas mababa yung kanyang ano naman yung kanyang um, contact time para masabing patay na yung mga mikrobyo or bacteria or germs sa isang surfaces imagine no so yung chlorine daw uh, at least seven seconds is enough para masabing uh, free from any bacteria yung mga uh, utensils yung mga tools or even the kitchen uh, kitchen surfaces Um, ang advantages ng paggamit ng chlorine, sabi siya, it is effective on a wide variety of bacteria. So any kind of bacteria, kaya niyang patayin. Um, um, not, affect, not affected din daw siya ng hard water. Uh, I forgot the right term for uh, yung Tagalog ng hard water, pero uh, um, just to at least medyo maintindihan nyo, usually... Um, ginagamit natin yung mga lumalabas sa mga poso, di ba? Or kaya sa mga faucet natin or gripo. That is hard water. Kasi meron yung isang tinatawag na soft water. Yan yung mga uh, distilled, purified. Those are soft water already. Okay? So, and, and at the same time, hindi siya ganun daw kamahal yung chlorine. Okay? So, that is another advantage of using chlorine. This is advantage unlike with iodine wala siyang disadvantage no but in chlorine meron pala siyang meron siyang uh, aside from uh, benefits meron din pala siyang negative effect or impact that is the disadvantage sabi siya it is corrosive so possible na kapag uh, mali yung uh, pagdidilute natin ng chlorine could be uh, pwedeng uh, masira yung mga um, utensils or tools na binabad natin sa kanya. And it can be irritating to the skin, which is, I don't know if you experience this. So kapag humawak tayo ng mga, let's say, di ba yung mga uh, chlorine um, sanitizer, medyo mahapdi talaga siya, mainit siya sa kamay, di ba? Tapos to the point na kapag matagal nyo yung nahawakan yun, So, nagkakaroon ng uh, sensation. So, nagsusugat-sugat na. Nagbabalat yung kamay natin. So, yun yung kanyang negative or disadvantage. Um, effectiveness decreases with increasing pH of solution. So, medyo nagkakaroon ng effect daw na bumababa yung effectivity niya uh, kapag mataas yung um, level of alkalinity ng is ng ng nilagay uh, na ginamit natin sa ka, na base sa kanya and it deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light so nagbabago yung kanyang uh, uh, when you say deteriorate during the storage and when exposed to light so may nagiging effect din pala kapag matagal siyang uh, yung chlorine ay matagal na nakastock and at the same time na expose sa araw So, nagkakaroon ng changes. It could be in color. Okay. Um, dissipates rapidly. Losses activity in the presence of organic matter. So, mabilis naman nawawala yung effectivity niya once na merong organic matter doon sa uh, nanasama doon sa solutions or sanitizing solutions. Next, we have Mm. Last but not the least is the quaternary ammonium. So, yung quaternary ammonium naman or quats. So when it comes to concentration daw at least 200 uh, ppm, 
na na, na uh, uh, kumbaga, parts of the chemical sanitizer and then parts of the water is 200 ppm at ang temperature niya it should be at least 75 degree Fahrenheit um same with the uh, uh, what you call this yung ating uh, iodine in terms to contact 30 uh, 30 seconds din na dapat nakababad yung mga uh, isa sanitize natin doon sa sanitizing solution ng quaternary ammonium compounds okay para again sabi ko nga para ma- masabi natin na to- totally wala ng any germs or bacteria doon sa mismong surfaces ng mga ng mga utensils na ginagamit natin. Okay? Advantage, it is non-toxic, odorless, colorless, hindi rin siya madali. Kumbaga, hindi siya nakakasira ng mga gamit natin kapag binabad sa kanya. Hindi rin siya uh, nakakas- nakakasugat ng kamay katulad ng chlorine, di ba? Um... Stable siya to heat and relatively stable in the presence of organic matter. Uh, active siya over a wide pH range. Okay, so medyo uh, marami siyang advantage then compare with sa mga nauna natin na chemical sanitizing. But then again, still meron pa rin siyang disadvantage. The disadvantage of using quaternary ammonium compounds as a chemical sanitizer so it's slow destructions of some microorganisms so not compatible with some detergents and hard water so again medyo mabagal siya when it comes to killing all bacteria in any uh, in in kitchen surfaces or yung mga tools and equipment natin so nawakapatay niya pero mabagal um uh, at the same time hindi siya compatible kung maglalagay tayo ng any um um any other cleaning agent like the, uh, detergent daw and then ang ang arte ng ng chemical sanitizer nito kasi ang ginagamit natin dapat na liquid ay it could be uh, purified water or what we call the soft water kasi hindi rin siya compatible with hard water okay So next we have the general guidelines in the uh, in the cleanliness and sanitation of the kitchen. So here's we will find out ano ba yung mga dapat nating uh, ano ba yung mga usually dapat ginagawa natin when it comes to cleaning and sanitizing our kitchen premises. Okay? First we have physical equipment and kitchen layout should be conducive to good sanitary practices. So, um, we have to consider the kitchen layout, so which is actually madidiscuss natin sa mga susunod na mga, sa susunod natin mga meetings, um, yung mismong kitchen layout, diba? kasi mahirap naman talaga maglinis kung uh, yung, yung layout ng ating kitchen ay hindi maayos, di ba? So nowadays, like for example, yung walling, oo, sa lu- uh, ayun yung pinaka-trend ngayon, yung walling ng mga kitchen. Instead of the usual walling na uh, straight, yung kanyang, let's say the walling and then the floor, straight, di ba? So may time kasi daw, mahirap siya linisan pag straight yung edges nung, nung nasa baba niya. Kasi nga, uh, most likely um, parang mas madali or prone yun na pamahaya ng mga, ng mga molds, ng mga, syempre ng mga unseen microorganism, di ba? So ngayon, ang ginagawa nila, instead na straight edge, yung parang pael, yung ating walling doon sa floor, yung iba ang ginagawa nila is meron na siyang parang pa-curve. So pa-curve na siya, pa, pa, yeah, hindi na straight, parang pa-curve na yung from the wall tapos meron yung parang di ba yung edge na nagoconnect sa floor medyo ano na siya curvy which is uh, according to them mas madali daw linisin yon okay um when it comes to yung mga kagamitan naman natin like for example dula din nasa picture so uh, may mga 
uh, tools and equipments na madali lang din siyang linisin at hindi siya madaling uh, pamuhayan or paggrowan ng mga bakterya, di ba? So, we have to consider also those uh, those factors, di ba? In order para um, uh, madali na sa atin ang pagsasanitize ng lahat. Next, number two. Dishes, glasses, utensils, tools, and equipment should be thoroughly clean, properly sanitized. Um, dito sa number two naman, of course, um, for special equipment, so there are specific uh, manufacturers' inst instructions kung paano na makikita nyo, kunyari, for example, sa mga ano, di ba minsan may mga Uh, parang what you call this um, manuals yeah the manuals ng mga pagbumibili tayo ng mga uh, equipment such as sunyar for example oven o kaya even microwave or even yung mga gas ranges so nandoon yung manuals nakalagay naman doon sa manuals naka-include sa manuals kung paano natin dilinis dilinisin yung ating mga biniling equipments, di ba? O yung mga kitchen equipments natin. So, paano natin uh, i-maintain na hindi madaling masira, hindi madaling kapitan ng uh, bacteria yung ating mga equipments, di ba? So, meron doon, makikita nyo yung operation and maintenance manuals ng equipment. Dapat binabasa natin yun every time na bibili tayo ng mga equipments, di ba? So, in order para mas matagal natin na magamit din, of course. Okay, next. Letter A, washing flatwares. So, yung mga flatwares such as, let's say, yung mga spoon, fork, knives. So, of course, when, when it comes to kung paano siya uh, linisin, so you, of course, always remember that we have to soak first yung mga kutsara, tinidor, and knives natin sa detergent solution. So, for example, meron kayong basin or timba, tapos lagyan nyo lang ng tubig yon lagyan nyo, let's say, ng liquid liquid detergent, diba? or liquid uh, dishwashing, uh, dishwashing soap. So, doon natin siya ilalagay for about ilang minuto lang para at least uh, Mababad muna kasi minsan ang nangyayari kapag napatagal na hindi natin na hinugasan muna yung mga utensils, di ba? Minsan yung mga ano tumitigas-tigas na doon sa ano, let's say kanin or ulam, di ba? Dumidikit doon sa kutsara, tinidor. So kailangan mo natin ibabad muna sa uh, so water, actually lukewarm water with, with detergent, okay? Or dishwashing detergent. Um... And then saka naman natin siya, of course, huhugasan na lang mabuti. Okay? And then, um, you, let her be use of water, bactericide, and detergent. So, plenty of hot water is uh, most of, uh, uh, is most for the dishes which are to be properly sanitized. So, this entails a supply of water with a temperature from about 170 degree Fahrenheit to 190 degree Fahrenheit for rinsing. So, um, therefore, yung, yung special hot water units natin, like, for example, heaters. So, heaters under yung sa rinsing natin, ng, ng, uh, uh, I mean, the rinse water tank natin, uh, dapat meron tayo yun nun sa kitchen. Okay, kung wala naman, syempre may mga iba na they can't afford naman to have that. So, pwede na yung ginagawa ng mga, yung traditional na ginagawa nila mami or ng mga uh, kasambahin natin na binababad na lang sa tubig or hot water. Letter C, S, floor, wall, ceiling, counters, tables, and chairs should be cleaned regularly. So, of course, yung mga yan, uh, we should be cleaned daily. Iba, yung of course yung floor natin kailangan uh, sinesweft natin yan and minamap din natin. Tapos yung mga walling, like yung sa kitchen, di ba? Uh, even the ceiling, walling and ceiling. So should we wash frequently and replenish periodically para at least maiwasan natin na um, 
pamuhayan ng mga any uh, pest like yung mga daga, yung mga cockroaches, at kung ano-ano pa. Letter D, yan, speaking. So, vermins and rodents should be eliminated from the kitchen premises, especially the food area. Um, again, mga, uh, uh, mga anak, when you say uh, vermins, this is the terms that applies uh, to insect, insect pests, such as, for example, yung sinabi ko nga ng mga uh, cockroaches or ipis, fl- flies, mosquitoes, And yung rodents naman, these are yung mga rats and mice. Okay? So, yung mga vermin or vermin rather, um, do not only destroy food, but of course, also infectious, di ba? So, hindi lang siya, na, kumbaga peste sa, ba, sa, sa bahay natin, sa kusina natin, na kinakain yung mga, let's say, mga stock natin na pagkain, di ba? So, still, kapag meron niya, contaminated the food, hindi natin alam na nadaanan pala ng daga. So, infectious siya. ba diba? Lalo na yung, yung ihi niya. ba diba? So, nakakatakot din. So, that's why ang ginagawa ng iba, especially in restaurant, they do have this uh, pest infestation na tinatawag. Okay? So, it could be at least weekly or sometimes twice a month ang ginagawa ng mga uh, ng mga food establishment like yung mga fast food. So, in order to control yung pagdami ng mga vermins and rodents sa kanila. So, sa bahay naman, syempre yung palagian lang or regular lang na maglinis ng area ninyo, especially in the kitchen dahil yung lagi may pagkain. So, dapat lagi natin siya sinasanitize dahil tayo nag naglilinis. Okay? Letter E is disposal, disposal of garbage and rubbish should be done daily. Of course, observe proper segregations of biodegradable and non-biodegradable uh, waste, of course. And then, of course, follow the waste management process of reusing, recycling, or kung ano yung mga dapat na itapon na basura. Diba? So, letter F is adequate employee supervision as well as the program of educating employees on sanitation should be maintained. Um, this is, uh, of course, to make employees uh, become aware of the significance of the sanitation, um, the sanitation practices, and uh, execute the practice as part of their daily routine. So, Um, that's why yung mga company, like for example, yung mga restaurant, fast food tulad ng sabi ko kanina, like, uh, I don't like to mention yung mga pangalan ng mga fast food na, ha? Uh, those uh, food establishment or the company ng certain restaurant, ang ginagawa nila, they conducting uh, training such as, for example, food safety and sanitation trainings or seminar. Of course, in order to uh, educate all the employees, when it comes to the sanitation practices. Okay? Um, sa atin, of course, in our subject, madidiscuss din natin yung mga food safety. Dapat familiar din tayo doon. ba? Diba? So, once na nakapag-work kayo sa mga restaurant, so you will know this, kung ano yung sinasabi ni Sir about, uh, about yung mga sanitations and food safety. Procedure in washing dishes, cooking utensils, glasses, and platters, starting clean dishes and utensils. So, uh, most of the dishes or most dishes can either be washed by hands, hands, of course, hand washing, uh, of course, in the sink, or using dishwasher. So, if you are, uh, uh, I mean, especially dun sa mga food establishment, dishwasher, syempre, ginagamit nila. Um, best practices in washing dishes is, is includes of the following steps. So ano ano ba yung mga yon? So we have the scraping, washing, rinsing, sanitizing, and drain. This is very important. So ibig sabihin, ito daw yung mga steps or methods when it comes to ano ba yung tamang paghuhugas ng mga dishwasher uh, dishes natin. Okay? So ano ano ba yung mga yan? Let's proceed to number one, which is scraping. 
So when you say scrape or scraping, so it's, it is the removal of leftover food and waste from solid dishes. Waste should be put through an opening in a soil dish table leading to a garbage receptacle under, underneath or into a garbage dispos uh, disposer. So again, pag sinabing uh, scraping, um, yung any left, kumbaga, during this, during this step, yung all the, the leftover, di ba, leftover food from our plates, so kailangan natin siyang i-scrape, okay, using of course, pwedeng spoon or fork, tapos dinederetso natin sa isang, uh, it could be in trash, trash bin or kung may plastic kayo, di ba, So, doon yung nilalagay. Yung iba naman ang ginagawa nila, pinagsasama-sama yung mga mumu-mumu na tinatawag natin or leftover, tapos pinapakain natin sa mga pets natin kung meron tayong pusa or aso. Diba? So, mali, ma, uh, mas mabilis kasi na mahuhugasan or malidinis yung mga plates or any soil dishes natin kapag ginagawa natin to yung scraping. Okay? Um, I'm sorry. Number two is washing, of course. So, in washing, sabi chan, washing in clean water at least 140 degree Fahrenheit or higher at least two minutes. So, right after natin i-scrape lahat ng mga leftover food, so we have to uh, wash it already. Okay? Um, yung, uh, of course, um, of course, um, what do you call this? Wash your dishes under uh, underwater with a sponge or this cloth para at least kahit pa paano medyo lumambot-lambot yung mga food particles na dumikit doon sa ating mga plato, di ba? So keep the dishes under underwater as um, we are scrubbing it. Uh, in order, sabi ko nga kanina, to loosen any uh, stock on food um, kailangan pag wipe natin yung plato natin, wipe it in a circular motion. Okay? Pa, pa round, pa circular. Okay? So that is simply washing. Next, after washing, of course, we have to rinse. So rinse dishes very thoroughly in clean hot water. So we want all the soap na matanggal because yung, kunya, let's say yung mga sabon-sabon, di ba? So that makes it, uh, let's say for example, may ginamit tayong chlorine. So chlorine bleach solution. So medyo magkakaproblema kapag may sabon-sabon pa yung mga plato natin, di ba? Kapag ginamit natin, pwede uh, malasahan natin yung mismong sabon doon sa mismong ginamit natin. Let's say plato o kaya kutsara. Di ba? So that's why kailangan natin banian mabuti. Okay. And then, after natin mabanian, we have to sanitize it. So, um, ano ba yung how, how important ba na isanitize natin yung mga tools and equipment natin, di ba? So, um, does it really makes any difference ba kapag sinanitize? Siyempre, ang answer doon is yes. So, If your goal is to do as much as you can, you can to make sure uh, germs are destroyed and prevent, uh, prevent of course foodborne illness. You definitely, you definitely want to, uh, of course, sanitize your dishes, di ba? So always sanitize all the uh, wash utensils and if uh, like plates, glasses spoon and fork, etc., etc. Then, of course, right after natin masanitize, we have to drain it, di ba? Let the dishes dry in a rack or on a clean towel, di ba? So, yung iba sa mga food establishment, they're using yung mga tinatawag natin na uh, dishwasher. So, sa dishwasher, na-drain na, na, na yung mismong ano habang hinuhugasan. Pero sa atin, you can use yung sabi nga dyan, um dish rack para at least ma mag-drift yung mga water. Diba? So we have to leave yung mga ating uh, wash 
na na mga plato, kutsara, tinidor for at least about 30 to 60 minutes. Okay? Air dry. Okay, so with that, uh, that is the end of our lesson. So I just hope that you have learned something today. Okay, so please do prepare yourself to review our previous lesson because, of course, we will be having our uh, assessment again. Okay, so have a good day class and then um, keep safe always.